Hello and welcome to World CFM Music. In this video, we're going to go over basic song service tips, part three. Let's get started. All right, so hopefully you've checked out the previous two song service tip videos, parts one and two. Um, this is the third part. You know, there are always tons and tons of tips that can be given things that you can learn or glean from when it comes to song services. But what I've tried to do in these three videos is just try to summarize a number of the main things that I believe will help song services. And so, of course, in short, if you have any questions or anything that you know, I may have missed, um, you know, I'd be happy to answer any questions you have and we'll, we'll revisit those, uh, that part at the end of the video. But let's begin song service tips part three. In this video, I want to go over four basic tips, if you will, and uh, hopefully help you guys out. The first tip I want to cover is creating a schedule for your musicians. Now, if you're a brand new pioneer church, you know, sometimes one, two musicians, a song service leader, if that, you know, um, it's easy. You know, you, you, you have what you have. But as you begin to grow, hopefully there are people getting involved and uh, wanting to be a part of the song service, wanting to get involved in ministry. And one of the best problems you can have in song service is having an abundant uh, use of musicians, uh, an, uh, an abundant supply of musicians. And so uh, it's always exciting, you know, as your church begins to grow to see people step, you know, step up, rise up, get involved and want to be in song service. But the challenge with that, of course, is creating a rotation. Uh, one of the things I've done is just create a basic calendar that uh, alternates, you know, musicians, uh, you know, singers, backup singers, things like that, song service leaders, if you have more than one, you know, a great tool to use, just creating a basic calendar. You can use Excel, any type of, you know, Windows, uh, Word or whatever it is. But this is something that can really help your song service group stay organized. It'll help your uh, musicians, backup singers know, you know, when they're supposed to be singing ahead of time um, versus in the spare of the moment. And uh, one of the things I encourage uh, our song service team is if, you know, they can't be there for any reason, something comes up, they're sick, they have a doctor's appointment, kids or whatever, you know, they can get a hold of someone to fill, fill in that spot for them. And so it helps to know ahead of time, you know, who's, who's in that place for that particular song service. And so the next tip I want to go over is altar call songs. Now, this isn't necessarily a, the main part of the song service, but of course it is music that's played during the altar call service. Uh, rule of thumb, something I've observed and try to in, implement in our uh, church service is to try to keep it simple uh, when it comes to what kind of song you're playing for the altar call. Uh, if you watch Prescott's live stream, you'll notice um, a majority of their time they're just singing a really basic chorus, um, a lot of you know older songs, if you will, uh, just something to kind of, uh, what it does is it allows the, the, the pastor to um, move the altar call as he feels he should, and uh, it can start and stop. Whereas if you have a long song that has a lot of verses, chorus, bridge, and things like that, it can kind of make it difficult to come to a stopping point um, quickly. And so, you know, something I encourage is when you're doing an altar call song, pick something short and simple, something easy. Um, and that way, you know, the, the altar call can move smoothly. And so, um, kind of on a similar note, and the third tip I have is when it comes to offering songs, uh, one of the things that I've also been able to observe and try to implement in our, in our church is the length of time it takes to pass the plate. Now, as of right now, we're in the season of the coronavirus, of the COVID-19 and so we're not passing the plate in many of our churches, if not all of them. And so uh, a lot of churches are just having uh, the people go you know, to a certain location, the front of the church, the back of the church, drop off their offering in the plate. Uh, one thing I try to do with that is try to have a song that's short enough and long enough to account for that time. Um, of course, the, the, the risk is having a song that's too long. And then, you know, stretching it and having a hard time bringing that song to a close. So what we do here in the Santa Fe Church is we just sing, you know, some oldie songs. He set me free at the cross. Um, you know, there is power, there is power. Uh, you know, a bunch of songs like that just to kind of give enough time for everyone to drop off their offering, return to their seats, and then we bring the song to a close. And so real basic tips just to help you guys out. 
And the fourth one I want to really zero in on, and uh, this was a struggle for me personally as a song service leader for a while, just knowing the balance, and that was how to approach implementing new songs into your song service. What I've done is I've reached out to a number of song service leader friends of mine, and I've asked them how they approach implementing new songs into their song service. And so I asked a couple churches here in Albuquerque. I asked my good friend Brian, who leads the song service in Prescott. Um, I asked them all how they implement their new songs. So basically, I'm going to summarize how this is done in hopes that it'll help you in bringing new songs into your church. So the first thing that's generally done is after a new song has been chosen, is feeding that music to the musicians and the singers. And what I mean by that is giving them an audio copy, whether it be YouTube, if you have a CD or whatever, MP3 downloaded, however it is, uh, giving your musicians a copy of the song so that they can familiarize themselves with how the song ought to be played, how the song ought to be sung. And so that's very important. And uh, of course, giving them ample time. Uh, generally, what I've uh, heard from you know song service leaders is that they'll give about a couple weeks of time for the musicians to familiarize themselves with the song. And then once you get past that one or two week period, then it comes to having a practice time. Some churches have a set practice day during the week. Um, others will do it, you know, bef you know, they come early before a church service and go over the songs together. However you prefer to do that, um, come together as a complete song service team, all your musicians, all your backup singers, all your song service uh, leaders, and go over that song together. It'll allow you to make any uh, adjustments or changes. It'll also show you where you're at in, in regards to how comfortable everyone is with a song. Uh, there have been times where, you know, I'll feed the music, or we'll come and practice, and it's just not ready yet. And so I'll hold off on bringing that song into our live service. And so uh, it's, it's just a great thing to take your time when it comes to implementing new songs. Um, you, know, you don't want to take forever, but try to have a balanced approach when it comes to introducing the new music. So you have the side of getting your song service team prepared for the new song. The other side, of course, is implementing it into your song service or into your church. Now, uh, one thing that I do personally is when I'm implementing a new song, generally I'll sing it about three times within one month. Now, I know in the last video I mentioned that I try to cycle my songs pretty evenly so as not to uh, wear people out on the songs or just burn out the songs altogether. Uh, this is the exception. And so the reason why is just so that the church has the opportunity as well to familiarize themselves with the songs. Um, I, I know that Prescott does basically the same thing. They'll sing the songs about two or three times in a month. Uh, it's a little bit different for Prescott because a lot of times they're bringing in new music in preparation for conference so that the rest of the fellowship has access to these new songs. And so somewhat of a different approach, but overall it's about the same. And so, you know, again, Give your uh, song service team ample time to learn the music. Practice it as a whole together. Make sure you have it down really good and then implement it into your church. I recommend doing it two or three times within a month. Um, you know, you don't want to do it five services in a row because you're prone to burning out the song right, right after you implemented the song. And so just some basic tips to help you guys out. And so I hope that really helps you guys. Of course, again, as I mentioned in the beginning, if there are any, uh, if there's any advice you're looking for, certain scenarios or situations, I don't know everything about song service, but I'll try my best to get the answers for you. If I do know the answers, I'd be more than happy to share that information, and of course, in hopes to help you guys out. And so, uh, you're more than welcome to send your questions to worldcfmmusic at gmail.com. That's the email address. You can also post your questions or comments in the comments section below. And you can also visit the website uh, worldcfmmusic.com and, you know, for any other resources that are, that are posted on the website there. But with that short video, hope, hope it helps you guys out. We're going to bring it to a close. More to come, more exciting stuff. So stay tuned. If you want to subscribe, you're welcome to hit the bell icon to be notified of future videos. But with that, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for supporting this channel and sharing the news with other churches throughout our fellowship. And we'll see you on the next video.